Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It. Today I'm going to tell you all about pin oak trees and how to grow them from seed. So if you wanted to choose a landscaping tree for your front yard that grew fast, had a nice shape, was landscape friendly in having little acorns, and also did something good for the environment, you'd be hard pressed to choose a better tree than a pin oak. Pin oak is one of the faster growing oak trees reaching heights of 70 to 90 feet in optimum growing conditions. And if it's grown in the open, it can have an oval to round shape, and it makes for a very handsome shade tree. And due to the pin oak's height, shapeliness, and growth rate, and beauty, it's made it one of the more popular oak species for both commercial and residential landscaping. Besides being a beautiful tree, the pin oak also hosts over 140 species of insect, making it incredibly important to the ecosystem, as well as just a beautiful tree. And it's not too difficult to grow from seed, but there are some key steps you can take to help ensure successful germination. So in this video, we're going to cover what is a pin oak tree, what are the benefits, where can you find them, and how do you identify them, when to collect acorns and test their viability, how to cold stratify or winter sow the acorns and planting depth and all that, when can you expect germination and establishment, and then we will review. So without further ado, let's dive into this one. Okay, so what is a pin oak? Well, there are over 400 species of oak trees worldwide, and there's more than 140 of those that are native to North America. But the pin oak is probably the most popular oak tree for landscaping in North America. Scientifically, it's known as Quercus palustris. Its native range generally runs diagonally from southwest Oklahoma up to Massachusetts, upstate New York, Wisconsin, and then all the way down to Mississippi to South Carolina. So it covers a very large area of the country. It grows in full sun and moist soil to medium moist soil that drains well, but it can tolerate occasional flooding. The pin oak tree has become so popular for several reasons, and the benefits are it grows very fast at up to 24 inches per year. They get tall, typically around 60 to 75 feet, but they can reach 90 feet in optimum conditions. It has a beautiful shape, making it a stately looking addition to any landscape. And probably one of the biggest reasons is it's a cleaner oak tree. Cleaner in the fact that the acorns are very tiny in comparison to other ones. This makes it very friendly for your lawn. You know, you're not going to necessarily trip over these and the lawnmower should pass over them easily. And the pin oak is very ecologically important. Anyone who may have read Bringing Nature Home by Doug Tallamy knows just how important the oak tree is to our environment. The pin oak is no exception. It hosts over 140 species of insects, including butterflies, moss, and beetles. And the, the larvae of those insects feed numerous birds. In addition to the insects feeding the birds, there are several species of birds that actually eat the acorns too, including turkey, wood ducks, blue jays, nuthatches. And as you can probably guess, there are a lot of other animals that like the acorns as well, including squirrels, chipmunks, deer, other small mammals. And the deer will even feed on the foliage a bit too. So. When it comes to trees, this one really is a total package. It looks good, it is yard friendly, and it does a lot for the environment. Okay, so where can you find a pin oak? Well, the natural habitat for pin oak trees is moist bottomlands with full sun and slightly acidic soil. Its species name, palustris, means swamps. So along creeks, ponds, lakes, and lower wild areas is where you can find it. Here are two examples, one being next to a wetland and the other is growing along a dry creek bed on a fence line. But it is by no means confined to swampy areas as evident by its popularity in residential and commercial landscaping. You can often find them in parks and people's yards as it does fine in medium moist soil, just typical regular soil that drains well. And IDing this tree is pretty easy as there are a few obvious tells that you have a pin oak, which we will get into next. I'm going to discuss the key features to ID this tree, but I want to point out that this entire video does exist as an article at our website, which I will link to below. So save it in your favorites if you're going to be going out to locate a tree, identify one, or want some information as far as how to take care of the acorns and plant them, it can make a handy quick reference. There's also a ton more info on this tree at our website that I won't cover in this video, including pruning, diseases, and much more detail on wildlife. But okay, on to identification. So branching on pin oaks is initially going to give it a pyramidal shape until it reaches full maturity. And then at that point, the upper areas will fill out, giving it a much more oval or oblong shape. 
And a mature tree will have lower branches that arch to the ground, mid branches that are horizontal, and the upper branches will angle upwards reaching for the sun. It, overall, it gives a very nice shape. The bark of pin oaks is a gray and brown in color. It's slightly furrowed with a rough texture. The younger trees will have smoother brown bark that will be speckled with little white dots that are known as lenticles. The bark of pin oak trees isn't that identifiable to me. Like, I can spot a red oak a long ways away because the bark is so distinct, but a pin oak is a little more challenging. Or maybe I should just say it's a little less distinct. The leaves of pin oak are probably the best way to identify the tree though. Um, pin oak leaves are alternate and occur on new growth and they're kind of clustered or grouped together. Individual leaves are two to six inches long by about half as wide, and the leaves are readily identifiable as they are pinnated with deep lobes. And these lobes are generally horizontal, but you can see the little hair on the ends of the leaves. They usually have a very dark green color and a thick texture. I need to point out that black oak leaves can look a lot like pin oak leaves. However, the acorns are clearly different. In autumn, the pin oak leaves can turn bronze or orange to red, depending on its local growing conditions, and it can be very beautiful. Pin oak will produce both male and female flowers in the spring, resembling a, a small string of flowers that is roughly one to four inches long. And these flowers will give way to small acorns that are pretty tiny for an oak, three eighths inch diameter to maybe half an inch at most. This makes them one of the smallest acorns that will easily pass under a lawnmower and not that likely to trip you up unless there's a whole cluster of them and, you know, maybe you could go flying like on a cartoon or something like walking on marbles. But the acorns are attached directly to the branches and initially they're going to be green with very small tight fitting caps. As they mature, they're going to turn brown and black and then fall off naturally. This occurs in late summer to early fall. And that is when you want to collect the acorns, when they begin to fall off the tree naturally. If you start to notice some acorns on the ground that are fresh, you know, kind of greenish or brownish in color, you can start to collect them directly from the ground. But if it's possible, collect them directly from the tree branch at this time. The reason why you want acorns from the tree is that once they hit the ground, there's little weevils and beetles that will have their larvae burrow into their acorns. And some of them will get infested with these and they will not be viable. So when acorns begin to fall naturally, gather them and get them direct from the tree if possible. Um, this usually happens around mid-September for me in zone six. Oh, and before I forget, if you plant a pin oak tree, it usually takes about 15 years before they start producing acorns. Okay, we're about to get into how to test the viability and plant the acorns. But before I do that, I just want to let you guys know, if you're enjoying this video, please click like on it. Give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel out and I greatly appreciate it. Okay, so not all of our acorns we gathered will be viable. So we need to test that. And there are two checks we're going to make to see if the acorns are viable. The first one will be to remove the cap and look for any holes. If you find a small hole under the cap or anywhere on the acorn, it indicates that some kind of uh, bug has entered the acorn and the larvae is now eating the nut inside. So if you see a hole, just discard the acorn. So just go ahead and remove every cap. They come off pretty easy by twisting. Next, we are going to immerse the acorns in water for 60 seconds. Simply drop your capless acorns into the water and wait one minute. Discard anything that floats. Any acorn that sinks and has no hole in it should be considered viable. Leave those in water for 24 hours before stratifying or planting. So pin oak acorns need to go through a period of cold, moist stratification of roughly 60 days before they're gonna break dormancy and can germinate. This is how nature does it. Squirrels will gather these acorns and plant them into the ground where they will sit all winter. Any acorn that the squirrels don't find and eat will have a chance of germinating in the spring, creating a new tree. So we have to do roughly the same thing with our acorns. And we can do this in two ways. We can either use the refrigerator or we can winter sow them. Now, the viable acorns could really just be planted in the ground if you wanted to, and that would be just fine. You could just have to protect it a little bit from the squirrels and chipmunks with a hardware cloth or a screen of some kind, but that would probably work though, and you would get trees to sprout up in the spring. Now, I'm gonna be growing several tree species this year, and I'm gonna winter sow them, but at the time of making this video, I did not have my protection against the squirrels built, a little hardware cloth screen I made. So I'm actually going to cold stratify these in the refrigerator for a bit first. 
To cold stratify the nuts using the refrigerator, I'm placing them in a large Ziploc bag filled with a moist mixture of sphagnum peat moss and vermiculite. The sphagnum peat moss helps keep any fungus away and the vermiculite, basically it holds moisture well and so it kind of acts like sand. And if you only had sand, you could probably get away with that as well. So, but to prepare the mixture, I'm just mixing them up 50-50 and I'm adding water and mixing as I go. And I'm trying to go for the consistency of a damp rag or wrung out sponge. My target moisture is that if I pick up a handful and squeeze it, only a few drops of water fall out. Then I can basically just put them into a Ziploc bag, you know, cause the pinnock acorns are nice and small and stick them in the fridge and forget about them until spring. And if you have plenty of space in the fridge, you could just leave that baggie in the fridge until spring and use that as your stratification. However, I'm going to be winter sowing a lot of other seeds and I have several other tree nuts I'm going to be germinating and I don't want to fill up my entire fridge with this stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to be winter sowing them. And to do this, I am using these discarded yogurt containers, the big ones. And I am just using moist potting soil and I'm planting my acorns approximately one inch deep. Just using a general potting soil in these old yogurt containers. And I'm putting a couple of acorns in each pot. If you do use a makeshift container like I am, make sure you add some drainage holes at the bottom and make sure the water can actually drain out. That's very important. Then we just need to set the container outside all winter and make sure it stays protected from the squirrels. Any kind of uh, barrier that allows water in but can keep a squirrel out is acceptable. That's pretty much it. Just make sure that the squirrels can't get to it and the wind doesn't blow it away. So use a rock to hold it down or something. And check your container every so often to make sure it doesn't totally dry out. But in my experience, larger containers like this will not or rarely dry out in the winter. So the seeds should germinate in mid to late spring once temperatures have warmed up. I recorded my first seedling on May 3rd in zone 6. And I let the germination continue for a few weeks before I started separating um, trees and putting them into larger pots. After moving to uh, different pots, I place the seedlings in a location that gets very little sun for a week or two. This is kind of like uh, taking away the transplant shock and just lets the roots kind of grab a hold of some dirt again. But after this period, you're actually, you can go ahead and plant it out in a final location. You can grow it for longer in the season and then plant it out later in the fall. Um, if you do plant it out somewhere where deer and rabbits are around, you need to probably consider protecting it. You can use a tree shelter or a cage. A tree shelter would be better because it can act like a natural greenhouse as well as protect the, from the deer and the rabbits. Deer absolutely love to eat small oak tree seedlings and rabbits will chew the bark of snaplings during snowy winters. So prepare yourself. <laughs> okay, time to review. The pin oak are excellent landscaping shade trees to grow and they have a very high wildlife value. They grow quickly and they're pretty adaptable in a lot of locations. The acorns will mature in late summer to early fall, roughly mid-September in zone six for reference. To test the viability, just remove the caps and check for holes and then see if they float or sink, discard the floaters, and then winter sow them about one inch deep or cold stratify in the fridge for 60 days, and then winter sow planting them one inch deep and protect them from squirrels. The germination will occur in late spring and plant your trees in a location with full sun and moist to medium soil for the fastest growth and the best results and don't forget to protect them from deer and rabbits. Okay, but that's all I've got for you today. If you guys enjoyed this video, again, please give me a thumbs up as it really does help my channel out and I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, please ask them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. And you all have a good day. Thank you.